gunfire started going off and you know, Crips was on one side, Bloods is all running around. And what happened is I she was outside the limo shooting. Just bam, bam. And I remember I opened the door and I always remember I said, look at this $20 million idiot shooting at people about to get killed. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Really? You, when you talk about MC Hammer, you know, people used to try to play him as if he was like just a, because this guy different. When I started to research him since I met you and when you told me those stories, I thought he was just a regular dancer dude in some big pants. No. But this dude is a, not only an entrepreneur, this dude was somewhat a uh, gangster. Oh, I'm going to be real with oh, you. No, I'll be real. I tell people, I said, you know, I said, you know, we thought we was going with the non-gangster. We ended up going with a king kind of gang. It was like, oh, wait a minute. Hammer ain't that. Because, you know, you would when you first, you know, think about it. He in the pants. That's what I'm telling you. Dancing, you thinking, oh, he's just goofy and stuff. Then when I got to meet him, I was like, oh, no, Hammer Street. He's he street. He's street. I was like, okay. You know, the high street boys, I was like, he really is street. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. And, and what's sad is that, you know what's really sad? Think about this. All the rappers that talked about Hammer for getting deals and getting all these endorsements, do you know they all got endorsements? That's how they make money. They ain't making money of selling no records no more. Wow. I mean, think about it. You get them streams of one cent a piece and stuff like that? No. They make, we make money off endorsements. That's off of crazy. people actually endorsing us. They clothes, cologne, liquor. Think about all that. that. All that. These rappers are making money the most off of having their own liquor, putting their name on liquor and getting proceeds from that. Let me ask you this. When Death Row came, because it came after NWA, when Suge Knight came on the scene, it seemed like everywhere people, when he wanted to come in a room, I was in a room when he came in once, in a, in a casino, everybody started whispering, I'm not playing. They started well, no, no, whispering, I believe that, I'm, I'm being I real. With you for so, a so if I'm saying like, how was that Suge? Was it as terrifying as people made it to be? Well, you know what? For you, you know. I have well, you know what? The thing is, is that Shug had, you know, there, we don't, to be honest with you, I don't know if it was true or not, but Shug had this kind of, um, people told me, and then, you know, and I hope I don't get in trouble, but I don't care, but Shug was under Harry O, and so everyone knew Harry O was like the business, so you didn't mess with Harry O. So if you didn't mess with Harry O, you didn't want to mess with Shug. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then, was uh, Harry O here? Or no, was Harry he? was locked in, in prison. But he still was. Yeah, oh man, yeah, Harry, shots. O, Harry O, he out. He still calls shots. What do you mean? <laughs> peace, Harry O, peace <laughs> out. He's still calling shots. I don't know, you know what? Um, somebody told me it was uh, Cotton Pickle. What's his name? You remember himself, Cotton Pickle? Um, the one I always interview. Yeah, I can't remember. He, he, him and Larry, he's, he, he's, Harry O, he deals with him. Yeah, Harry's out now. He out. I mean, he I, no one sees him because, because, you know, I think he's under, you know, he. Yeah, but he, he I heard that. Seen, I'm but, serious. But, you know, he out and he, he, I heard he doing business. I heard he, you know, he, he, he got his stuff together. He's doing his thing. And, he, you know, I, I salute him because. Why was you and Suge hanging out here, though? Because what happened is. is Why? That, remember, Hammer went to death row. Sure did. So what happened is before he went to death row, I was supposed to go to death row. And so what happened is, is that, you know, she had heard some stuff about me. It was like, hey, I like your voice. Want me to put you on some backgrounds. And, and so I used to stay. Everybody stayed in Fremont. I stayed in L.A. I had a girlfriend that stayed in L.A. in Inglewood. Okay. So I like to be in Inglewood all the time. So I always fly down and go, you know, and hang out with all the. That's the reason why I'm one of the ones that knows a lot, a lot of people in the industry. Because I came to L.A. Wow. And I lived in L.A. And I just fly back. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Oakland, to Fremont, yeah. and work with him. But but when I did that, when I came to L.A., shit would be around, and, and I would be like, he'd be like, hey, you, we, we got this party. You want to go here? You want to go there? And I was like, yeah. You know, you wide-eyed. You're like, yeah, of course I go with Shug. But then I realized that um, being around Shug might not have been so. And then I got a little, um, I'm gonna talk, I ain't going to talk about it now, but I'm going to talk about it in my documentary or whatever. But me and Shug had a little falling out, a little distance, you know, a little falling out. And because I had the falling out with Shug, I realized that because Shug respect didn't do anything to me, I got a little rep in L.A. Because okay. everyone thought that I was, I seen him at the American Music Awards before he got arrested and everyone just, and what was so sad was that the people that were walking with me all dispersed. 
When really? I, Suge and Suge, I told you they act weird. They dispersed when they saw because they knew Suge was not really happy with me at the time. Yeah. And I grabbed him and we just shook and he said, hey man, we got to give it. And after that. So y'all did, was able to come together and oh, there yeah, wasn't no standing. he came to me and said, you know, I mean, there's a deeper story than Of that. course, and you're going to tell that in the documentary, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but when y'all see it, at least it didn't come. But I had, I had, you know, I had some protection at the time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a deep story. So, I mean, my thing is that, but he was cool. And what got me was I realized, I said, these folks that I was hanging around didn't ever have, didn't have my back. They didn't have my back at all. I said, I couldn't believe that I walked up and they all, they all just dispersed. Like, you know, cause I guess they thought, oh, Deuce about to get shot and dead, something strange, yeah. something like that. But, but, um, but I've seen that with Shook. I've seen where he's, I'm, I'm gonna give a story and I don't care if you get mad, if you tell. We were at, um, Prince used to have a club. Okay. And um, people, gunfire started going off and you know, Crips was on one side, Bloods is all running around. And what happened is, I, Shook was outside the limo shooting. Just bam, bam. And I remember I opened the door and I always remember I said, look at this $20 million idiot shooting at people about to get killed. Because at the time, that was back in the 90s, he was like, we're $20, 30000000 million. And to us, that was could have been a billion to us, you know, back then. But I just was tripping. I was thinking, look at this dude. He worked all this money and he up there, you know what I'm saying? He doing the street stuff. And, you know, you know, and here all these other people are supposed to be gangsters. And all the gangsters is hiding in the cars and running around and shit out there just... You know, I heard that. stories, man. I heard stories. One one story I heard just recently on my show that Suge was going to do a, uh, he lost $700,000 trying to do a death row East Coast. And then I heard he lost 400000 trying to do a death row Atlanta, like in the South. And and it's like, and the question came up on the show, like, how would he lose that much money? It was like, that's not, that wasn't a lot of money when you were the type of guy he was in the money. Oh, yeah, would you have him having 20, 30 million with the company at the time? And you got to think about, he had the biggest rappers of all time on his, on his, on his, you know. On, think Which about project it. did you like the most that he dealt with? Because you had Snoop, you had Dre, I don't know, you I had, had like Pac, you know. That was yeah, Pac. Homie, so Pac was, Pac was uh, the homie. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I, I was with Digital Underground. You know, I knew Digital. So you know Money B. Well, Man, I'm talking the other day. Tell Ronnie I said, Ronnie, I said, what's up? Tell him Deuce was, he was like, oh, you seen Deuce. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Ronnie used to be my manager. Really? Yeah, yeah, Money B was my manager for a while. We did a song called, um, um, remember uh, when Master P did, um, mm, na 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 na? Yeah. Me and, me and Money did a song like that. <laughs> y'all gonna just do y'all Oh, no, no. We was actually, we did it before he did it. Oh. But, but uh, I was kind of drunk on the song. <laughs> and I said it. I said, oh, I'm hella high. So I said, ooh, I'm hella high. <laughs> so have you, so you met Master P and all them before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know Silk? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what could you tell me about Silk? Um, just that they, I mean, because I work, my cousin is actually Rico. Uh, okay. from, you ever heard of Sons of Funk? No. They're from Master P. Okay. So my, that's my cousin. And so we actually, he's on, we're, we're, he's part of the tour that I'm mm -hmm. doing. Um, it's, it's called Master P Meets with MC Hammer. It's, it's uh, DRS. Uh, it's uh, Sons of Funk. It is um, uh, uh, Bleed, MC mm -hmm, Bleed, mm -hmm. uh, Natasha, and uh, Moby, 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 um, I can't think of Moby, whatever, Moby, mm -hmm. Moby Dick or something like that it's called. But we're all doing a tour, trying to do a tour together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.